This video is about improper integrals, especially the first type, which I'll define in a moment. Two examples of improper integrals are the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared, dx, and the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of tan x, dx. What makes these integrals improper? Well, in the first example, it's this infinity in the bound of integration. And in the second example, it's the fact that the function tan of x itself goes to infinity on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, where we're integrating. So an integral is called improper if either of these two situations occur. It's called a type 1 improper integral if we're integrating over an infinite interval. In other words, there's an infinity or a negative infinity somewhere in the bounds of integration. So the first example is a type 1 improper integral. A type 2 improper integral occurs when the function that we're integrating itself has an infinite discontinuity on the interval. By an infinite discontinuity, I mean the function is going to infinity or negative infinity. This is also called a vertical asymptote. This vertical asymptote could occur in the interior of the interval we're integrating over, or, as in this example, it could occur on the endpoint of that interval of integration. Now it's possible that both of these situations could occur for the same integral, and that's also an improper integral. This video will focus on type 1 improper integrals. A type 1 improper integral asks us to integrate over an infinite interval. To do this, we take the integral over larger and larger finite intervals and take the limit. So for example, to find the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, we'll evaluate the integral from 1 to some finite number t, and then take the limit as t goes off to infinity. In symbols, we can write the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx. Since 1 over x squared is the same thing as x to the minus 2, we can integrate it to get negative x to the minus 1, evaluated between 1 and t, and then take that limit. I'll rewrite this as negative 1 over x, and evaluate on the bounds of integration. As t goes to infinity, 1 over t goes to 0. So the limit just comes from this expression, which evaluates to 1. If we think of the integral as representing area, this is a little surprising. Even though we're taking the area of an infinitely long region, the area still evaluates to a finite number of 1. In this situation, we say that the improper integral converges. So in general, the improper integral from some finite number a to infinity of f of x dx is defined as the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from a to t of f of x dx. We say that the integral converges if this limit exists as a finite number, and we say that the integral diverges if the limit is infinity or negative infinity, or if it doesn't exist. Similarly, we evaluate the integral from negative infinity to some finite number by taking bigger and bigger intervals that extend off to negative infinity. That is, this integral is defined as the limit as the left endpoint t goes to negative infinity of the integral from t to b of f of x dx. We say that this integral converges if the limit exists as a finite number and diverges otherwise. So to evaluate the integral from negative infinity to negative 1 of 1 over x dx, we take the limit 
as t goes to negative infinity of the integral from t to negative 1 of 1 over x dx. Now the integral of 1 over x is ln of the absolute value of x, which we'll need to integrate between t and negative 1 and take a limit. If we evaluate here, we know that ln of the absolute value of negative 1, that's ln of 1, which is 0. A graph of ln is helpful for evaluating the rest of this expression. As t goes to negative infinity, the absolute value of t is going to infinity, and so ln is also going to infinity. Therefore, our limit is actually negative infinity, and so the integral diverges. In this video, we evaluated improper integrals in which the interval that we're integrating over is infinite by looking at the integrals over larger and larger finite intervals and taking a limit.